Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Temi, a software engineer working in London, and I make YouTube videos about tech, early careers, and everything in between. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my university CV that got me my first ever tech job. I don't have a traditional technical background as I studied geology and physics at university. So in this video, I'll go over how I used my university degree and previous internship experience to actually make a decent enough resume to land me my first tech job. For some context, my entry level tech job was actually something called a technology graduate scheme. And that's basically where you join a company and rotate into different teams within that business. When I applied, the only requirements to get the job was a 2-1 degree in any subject area. Before I jump into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Okay, so let's jump into it and take a look at my CV. So the first thing that really stands out to me is the margins on this CV. On the left hand side, there's like barely any margins, it's really small. And on the right hand side, there's a whole lot of space and it just looks odd. I think if a recruiter were to look at this, they just assume that I'm trying to cram as much information as I can onto these two pages, which isn't great. Another thing which I don't really like are the blue lines on my CV. I think it's fine to have designs and patterns, but the spacing between each heading and then the line isn't coherent. In some places, there's a big spacing between each title and the lines, and in other places, there is barely any spacing. So if you are going to include designs or patterns on your CV, just make sure they're not too harsh and that the formatting is consistent and neat. At the top, I have my name and my contact details. I think it looks okay, although the first thing I would do is completely get rid of my home address. I'm not sure how other people do it today, but I know that I no longer include my address on my CV just for safety purposes. So probably what I would do is put my email on one line, telephone on another, and then a link to my LinkedIn profile as well. Another thing which I've noticed is this gap between the experience and voluntary section here. I don't know why I put such a huge gap there. It just looks a little bit silly. I think it comes off as me not being able to format properly or not looking over what I've done. Let's move on to the university education section. So I put my education section first because at this point I didn't have any real world experience, just my degree. For my master's degree, I put the year and the course and the university that I was studying at and this looks okay. I think I could have spaced it out a little bit more because it does look a bit cramped but it's okay for the most part. I also put pending next to it, which is a good thing to do if you haven't finished your degree or internship yet. Some people tend to put predicted as well. So if you were predicted a first class or two one degree, you could always put predicted two one degree instead of pending. I also have one bullet point for my objective. And normally the objective section is just a good chance for you to talk about your career goals. For mine, I say, I'm studying exploration geophysics to embark on a prospective career in resource exploration, engineering, geophysics, and information technology. The first thing is that all those things I just mentioned are different industries. And normally when you're applying for jobs, you're supposed to tailor your CV to the job you're applying to. So this doesn't look great. I think that if a recruiter were to look at this, they think, okay, well, which one is it? Because you're interested in five different industries, but you're applying to this one role. So I think at this point of writing my CV, I was only applying to tech roles anyway. So I should have just said that I was interested in a career in technology. I then go on to list the relevant modules that I've done just to show my technical ability. I then go ahead and do the same thing for my undergraduate degree. So just list the relevant modules. And I also have a separate bullet point dedicated to the dissertation that I did, which is a good idea because doing a dissertation is essentially an independent research project. So putting this down and maybe writing a few sentences about what you did shows your ability to work independently and take initiative as well. So your second CV tip is to be as concise as you can 
when talking about your experience because no one wants to read chunks and chunks of text. So make sure you're including the most important pieces of information. Now moving on to the skills section of my CV. So this should be called the skills section and not the additional skills section because I don't have a skills section on my CV for this to be additional. Firstly, I say I'm skilled in MATLAB programming and also using the engineering software called Holbase, which is okay. I then move on and say I'm knowledgeable in Python programming and Linux software. I wasn't knowledgeable in Python at the time. I'd taken one module in it during my second year of undergrad, but I didn't understand it at all. So I really shouldn't have put that down there. And that's one thing to really keep in mind. Never put anything on your CV that isn't true and that you can't talk about in an interview because anything that you put on your CV is fair game in an interview. They will assume that because you've put it on there that you know it. And if they ask you a question about it and you can't answer it, it doesn't look great. I also mentioned that I'm proficient in all Microsoft packages, which again, isn't that true. I don't think it's even necessary to mention anything about Microsoft Word or Excel, unless maybe you're applying for a finance role where Excel is quite an integral part of your day-to-day -day job. I also say that I have excellent written and verbal skills in English, but I think I didn't need to include it just because when I get to the interview stage, they'd be able to see that anyway. I do think it is useful to put down languages on your CV that are additional. So if you know Italian, maybe Spanish, Arabic or Cantonese, it would be good to put that on your CV. But in my case, I don't think I needed to mention anything about having good written or verbal English skills. Another CV tip is to put your strongest skills first and then your least strongest at the bottom. This might be a good thing to do. Or if you're putting your skills in a list, you could put your strongest one first and then comma, your next one comma. And then as you're going down the list, put the one that you're least familiar with. You don't have to do this, but I know that some people tend to do that anyways. Let's move on to the last section of my CV, which is positions of responsibility. First of all, I'm not really sure why I had a separate section for this because pretty much all the points which I mentioned here are volunteering. So I should have really moved this to the volunteering section. So I talk about being a student ambassador at my university, which is volunteering. And I also talk about being a student academic representative for a few years at my university, which is also volunteering. So I really should have deleted the last few points in the volunteering section and then moved these positions of responsibility points to that volunteering section. Like I said earlier, the less text you can have on your CV, the better, because recruiters will only look at your CV for around seven to 10 seconds before deciding whether or not they want to continue reading or throw your CV away. Overall, I think the CV is pretty decent considering I only had two degrees and a two month summer internship under my belt. There are a few cringeworthy things here, but at the end of the day, this is my first ever CV that got me my foot in the door and landed me my first ever tech job. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got some insight into some things that you should and shouldn't be including in your CV. Let me know if you have any more advice or if you have some CV tips, be sure to share them in the comment section down below. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to see more content from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.